All right, Joe. Um, so my question is, uh, many times when I'm doing the Tai Chi form or, or other f forms, um, my experience of it, my sensation of it is that the shoulder is down, the hips are where I feel they should be, the knees are where they should be. Um, but my instructor, Stephen, will sometimes make a correction and say your shoulder is up, your hips are out of alignment, your knees pointed this way. Whereas I don't have that sensation, that experience of that that's going on. I felt like the shoulder was down. I felt like the hip was in alignment. Um, so when practicing, how do you correct those things without a person looking at you, visually assessing your posture and your form? Cool, thank you. Um, so I'll just answer you as if you're the camera, even though you're standing right here, I think. No <coughs> uh, so the first thing uh, to sort of unpack in that question or in that dynamic of teacher or student is that um, when the correction comes that this is out of alignment or something along those lines, it could be very well be that the reason that that correction comes is that you are now at the point that you're ready for it. Or um, in other words, it comes because you have a bunch of other prior things that have been done properly. And now we're ready for this level of detail or, or this um, depth of expression. And so it could be understood as uh, uh, a red mark on the test and, a, and a, an error and, a, and a, um, a finding of fault, right? And, and for some people, just the expression by the teacher of, hey, your this is off and that is incorrect and that's too high or too tight or too whatever can certainly be sort of a, a self-confidence uh, uh, challenge. Um, so I always want to be aware of that when I'm offering those corrections that uh, you know, I'm watching people's confidence level and stuff. I don't, my, my job isn't to sort of poke their confidence away. It's to actually just show them what next, what now are they able to get to. And sometimes it's, they're able to grasp it. They're able to reach that level of breadth or depth. They're um, ready now for this uh, 18th correction in a row because the, um, the buildup of other corrections has gotten to them to a stable place that they can now absorb this, whether mentally or physically or emotionally or whatever it might be. Uh, so that's my first thought there is like, uh, it could just be that, well, it is off and it's always been off, but I had to correct these other things first and now I'm saying it uh, uh, to get you to this next degree of precision, you know. So uh, secondly, uh, so how do I, <coughs> know if this is low or if that's leaning or that's high or, or, or twisted or something. Well, what we are doing when we're describing something that's sort of out of um, harmony or out of uh, alignment or out of uh, balance in some way, we, what we're doing is we're describing the, the self in relation to some perfect model, like a plumb bob or a level or a square. Uh, angle or something like that um, and uh, so if we're measuring our intrinsic experience to some extrinsic measure uh, it, it what it is is it's a story of calibration like how am I able to calibrate what I know to be level or vertical or balanced or what have you compared to what I'm feeling and if I can trust the external measure of calibration, then I can have my own feeling. <coughs> and that feeling might be, I'm straight, and, but I, I trust that measure, and that's a whole issue, why do I trust it? Like, you know, it's, uh, who created that device, and you know, do I trust my teacher when they say, I'm straight now, you know? Okay, so, uh, so if I'm trusting that alignment, like I'll often use like the window as a, as a straight line, but I, I'm trusting that, like that those windows are relatively square for our purposes. Um, and if I had reason to think otherwise, like the, the window panes cracked or something, well, you know, maybe somebody built this weird window and that's not our, uh, a good external measure. So if I'm feeling straight, 
and I'm seeing straight and I can begin to sense whether because my teacher helped me by telling me or I have a mirror or something like that or a classmate or whatever or I'm sensing it inside something feels tight here and stretched here if I can sense that even though I feel that I'm straight I sense by comparison that I'm not then it's a story of calibration I need to come into what matches, relatively matches, my external measure of balanced, straight, aligned, level, whatever. And then now I'm not going to be feeling straight because we know that felt straight, but that's okay. Now I have to learn that while I don't feel straight, I believe, or we can say that I know that I'm straight or straighter or straight enough for my purposes or these tolerances that I'm accepting. And so I have to learn to ignore my judgment that this is straight because I don't feel straight, but I also know that I am based on my trusted external measure, which might be my teacher. I trust my teacher. They said I'm off. I must be off. <laughs> if it happens that the teacher is not very good and their eyesight's going or whatever, okay, maybe it's time to get another teacher or, you know, not take that measure for yourself. But uh, it's fair to think that your teacher is going to be accurate or accurate enough for our purposes. And so I've come into balanced, but I don't feel balanced. But what I am doing is I'm recalibrating my sense. And if I do that repeatedly and I measure myself against the extrinsic measure, which could be the line on the wall, the line on the floor, uh, my partner, my, my training partner reminding me, uh, what have you, you know, teacup on your head not spilling, I must be pretty vertical. If I begin to recalibrate myself, then I can come into the point where I feel as balanced here as I seem to be in the mirror. And I, now I no longer feel balanced, or I feel that my one shoulder's up, and now it feels better. And so if I recalibrate myself, I can get to the point where my intrinsic sense my proprioception is uh, a reasonable measure for balance. And then I don't need an outside source. And then I may just occasionally check against outside sources, whether in sparring or on a scale or on a plumb bob or something like that, or on a balance board. I may check myself so that I, I you know, sort of zero out my scale, if you will, on occasion, and that's that's a good thing, you know, to do uh, to to test my inner measure of balance, and so I do that occasionally. That kind of answer. It does make sense. Yeah. It does make sense. Thank good. you. Thank you. <clears throat>